type make again, should be ready to go. Then you're going to type in server and your number. Mine is 9999, 10,000, 10,001, dot, 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 okay? Don't type in the wrong number. Mine is 9999. And it should do this. It should do nothing. It should just sit here. And it's waiting. You know, it's waiting. Nobody called yet. Go to the client window. Click on the client window. Now, you're going to type in client, local host. Everybody's local host. But now, type in your number. My number is 9999. So I got to put in 9999. Then press enter. And it should say this. Please enter the message. And they're connected right now. The client and server are talking. Now we're doing it. Well, you're in the client window. So please go to this one. So do your next one. Yeah. 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 Ye
Start first. So we we'll start first. Yeah, and the server can only react. This is the same way that web servers work. A web server can't call you. You have to connect with the browser. Okay, your client is the browser. Right? Apache can't call you. Okay? All right. Now let's look at the code. We ran the code. One hour. The easy code is the Python. So let's look at the Python client. Okay? Open up client.py. Client.py is pretty easy. Okay? Open that up on your on your window. VI API client.py in your client window. Take a look. You'll see the code is simple. I know you don't know Python, but Python is easier than C, so we're going to take a look at some of the logic. We get some string from the user, your port number, but what if you type in a bad port number? We have to check. So, 
What do we try? We try to make it an integer. If we can't make it an integer, you get you get an error message. Maybe it's an integer, but it's too low. I told you it has to be 1024 or more. Otherwise, we get too low. What if it's too big? If it's too big, we tell you it's too high. Okay? Now, that D can't go this high, but this is sort of like the, the absolute limit for TCP IP. Most machines have about 32,000 ports. A few, maybe 128,000. But not many have <coughs> 2 billion ports. It takes a lot of RAM. Okay? But that's the absolute limit. We can check for it. So this is a, a routine that takes a string and gives you back an integer for the port number. Because we need the port number. Okay? Now, let's go a little bit further in the code. Here's our main. Just like C, Python has a main. It looks different, but it's the same idea. And we have argv, just like C. Now, we don't have an argc because argv is a magic array in Python. But we check. If you didn't get two arguments, right? Program, arg1, arg2. If you didn't get that, we tell you, hey, program name, host name, port. Okay, you got to have it. Otherwise, we get the port number by converting. And if, if the port number convert fails, if we can't convert, you see we exit program. If there's anything wrong, exit program. That's not really great, but it's easy to code. So we take easy today. Okay? After you get the port number, then we open up a socket. And we tell him, IPv4, stream socket. A stream socket is the normal kind, just like World Wide Web, just like FTP, just like all those things. <laughs> then, we have to set up a server. We have to convert your name into an IP. Now today, <laughs> we use localhost, right? Localhost. But it could be any name. This function will use DNS or the host file or whatever, and it will change that host name into IP for you and put it in this variable. Then we connect the server and the port number. Okay? We connect with those two things, IP and port. We connect up. If we can't connect, print the error, exit program. What can happen? Maybe the server's not it's running. 18 hours. Maybe the firewall blocks you. I don't know. But if we can't do it, print the error and exit. If we can, great. Tell them, enter the message, input that, and put it in the buffer. Okay, the buffer's like a string. Then, we send the string. S, not send all. S, remember S is the, is the socket that we opened up. Okay. We send the bytes on the socket, and we tell them, hey, make sure it's UTFA. Then, after we send, we wait. We wait to receive the answer back. And it might be up to 256 bytes, max. And whatever we get back, make, you know, convert it into UTFA. Why do we have to have this UTFA? Python likes UTFA. Okay. This way you can send... Thai language, or Chinese, or anything, Arab, whatever you want, because those all can be converted into the UTFA. We have to do that because the socket only knows bytes, right? The socket doesn't know your language. It doesn't care. It's just bytes. So we have to do this extra convert with the bytes and the SDR. The bytes changes the buffer into bytes, and this one changes the bytes back into a string for Python. Finally, print the message, shut down the connection, close the socket, and end the program. That's your client in Python. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, not yet. Let's look at the C language client. C language client 
will make you love Python. Look at all that. It's very similar. Make sure we got three arguments. If we didn't get them, fail. Get the board number. I have a function just like I had. Open a socket. If the socket's no good, give an error. Then we have to set up the server information. To set up the server information is harder in C. More steps. But it does the same thing. This zeroes out the buffer. We choose IPv4. Okay, AFI net, IPv4. That's what we want. And then uh, after we get that set up, we call this thing to put the port number in there, and finally we connect. Okay? We connect. If we can't connect, we get an error connecting. In Python, you have a try accept. In C, you call and you check the return code. Okay? C does not have exceptions support. Okay? It's an old language. But the code looks almost the same. Then you enter the message. We don't have to worry about the bytes in UTFA because C doesn't know UTFA. In C, everything is bytes. So we don't convert in C. Read the socket up to 256 bytes. If we didn't get anything, we got some error, give an error. Otherwise, you know, we print it and we shut down. So, pretty simple, right? Read, print, shut down, close, return. So it does the same thing in Python and C. I think the Python's easier to read, but you saw they both run the same, they work the same. Some people like C, some people like Python. You can do the same thing in many languages. It has the same steps, whether you do PHP or Java or whatever. Okay? That's your client code. Let's take a look at the server code. Again, I'm going to start with a Python server code. It's a little bit easier to read, but they work the same. Same function. I don't have to tell you that again. Now, the server is even shorter in Python. We only need one argument, right? It says two because one is the program name. But program name and port number. Port number. Then, get that port number into an integer. Tell him. IPv4, stream socket, bind to all interfaces on that port. We didn't give them, this could be a host name, but we didn't give one. Empty host name is me. So it says, on me, listen on all my interfaces. Loop back, E1, E2, PPP, everything. Okay, I told you this one is simple. So listen everywhere. Then call the listen function. After you buy, it's not really turned on. Listen will turn it on and say, okay, I'm ready for connections. And then you accept a connection. And it will it will hang until somebody talks to you. It will hang in, in the accept. After you get the accept, it's going to return two things. Remember, Python's a little different than C. You can return two things from a function in Python, no problem. So we get two things. We get adder, which will tell you the client IP address, and you get con, and con is our socket connection that we can read and write. Now, we go receive up to 256 bytes, Convert that into a UTF-8 string and store that in the buffer. Then we print the buffer. Then we send something back. We use send all. And here I use this B. B says bytes. So I don't have to convert again. I send the byte message here. Shut down, close, in program. Okay, those are the steps. Let's 
Let's look at the sea virgin. It's very similar. In the C version, we check the argument count. Then, we're going to have to uh, set up a socket, IPv4, stream socket. We get the port number. We really should put this up here. Yeah, I'll fix it by next week. But anyway, we get the port number. We fill in the information about this host. All right, all this stuff. Then we do the bind, just like we did the bind in, in Python. Here we do the bind. In C, it takes more arguments, but it's the same idea. Then we listen, which connects up the system. And finally, uh, we do the accept. Okay, this Krylin thing is just we have to get some information because of the way the parameters are stored in C. But we do the accept, just like in Python. Accept will hang until somebody connects up. Okay, that's how accept works. It'll hang. And then when somebody connects up, if there's an error, we give an error message. If it's okay, we read up to 256 bytes. If we can't read, give an error message. If we can, print the, print the message. Write, I got your message back. 18 bytes. If we can't, give an error. Otherwise, shut down and close and end the program. So you'll see the system calls are exactly the same in the two languages. What's different is the details. In C, you have to declare all these special variables, which is a lot more work. In C, you have to include a lot of special stuff at the top to make it work. But the concept is the same. I hope by showing you these example programs, you can see that it's not so hard if you have an example. What I would like to do is to uh, have you try to write a file upload program. File upload program. Okay? Many teachers, they have a way for you to send in the homework. Or maybe you want to send in a picture to some website. You know, and you want to upload. How do they do it? Well, now we have all the tools we need. 